Hi everyone and welcome to part 5 of the Bulldog tutorial. So in this part I'm going to be working on the whole of the muzzle here and the nose and then in the final part I will work on the neck. So this part will probably be one of the longest parts because this bit's quite detailed although I don't know it just depends how quickly I get through it but I'd imagine it would probably be one of the longest parts. So I think I'm going to start with the nose itself which is the like central focus of the piece really. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start off with a black, um, which is shade 199, and I'm just going to mark out very lightly the blackest bit on the nose, so the nostrils, which has some black in it, so I'm just going to mark those out, just, just roughly so I know where the darkest, darkest area of the nostril is. I'll zoom you in a bit, I think. You can see a little bit better. And then the other nostril. You can't really see much of the actual nostril itself because of the shape of a bulldog's nose. Their nose is a bit more kind of flat, um, whereas quite a lot of other dogs have like bigger nostrils. Whereas the bulldogs have like kind of more slitty kind of nostrils. So yeah, I'm just gonna just map that out and then I'm gonna go in with I think I'm gonna go in with 176 just a brown and I'm gonna kind of map out the brownest areas so kind of around the nostrils um, and a little bit in the center of the nose really I'm kind of gonna just shade in those areas roughly with this brown so around the actual nostrils themselves is a little bit darker because the nose has quite a lot of white on it because it's got quite a lot of shine on it so it's kind of reflecting the light from the surroundings so I will be adding quite a lot of white and maybe a bit of grey into the nose as well like we have with the fur up here there's just quite a lot of reflection um, in this portrait so it'd be a nice shiny nose If I go over the black um, and make the black less bold, um, it doesn't matter at this point because I can just go over it again. So I just matched out the black at first just so I knew roughly kind of where that area is. I'm just going to shade underneath the nose a little bit because there is some brown kind of here. So I'm just going to add that in just to kind of, so I can see where the nose ends. And then I'm going to add in some of the white um, and then just blend it all together. So I'm just going to go in with the soft white and I'm just going to add a rough layer um, over the lightest parts of the nose and then I'll just blend it all together and then I'll keep adding layers. So just so that there's a nice base layer to begin with, which as you probably know, that's what I always do in every section. I like adding in a base layer just so that all of the paper has a little bit of colour on to get started with.
Okay, so that's just a basic layer on the nose. So I'm gonna go in with a blending stump. Doesn't matter if it's got brown on it because I'm gonna add more white and stuff on top. So I'm just gonna gently blend it all out. Get rid of any of that grainy look. And just create a really soft base. Yeah, the white is looking a little bit brown, but then I'm going to add in some of the harder white um, later on to add in all the details anyway. So, yeah. so that's that. So that is the base layer on the actual nose itself. Um, and then I'm going to grab the black again and just define that nostril again. Same on the other side. And I'm going to add a slight, very light bit of black on the centre of the nose, not the whole way up, just sort of there, like that. Just kind of deepen up that crease a little bit in the middle. Um, and then I will be going in with the brown again. Um, Possibly the more reddish brown, which is 177. I'm going to give that a go, see what that looks like. Um, going on these, the darker bits around the nostril again. So I'm just going over that again, but with this brown. Same around in the other nostril. like that gently blend this bit out slightly just around the edges okay and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sharpen up the brown so I've got a really really sharp point and then I'm gonna add in some details so I'm gonna use I think I'm gonna use 177 so I'm just gonna sharpen this one up and so it's in a really sharp point and then I'm gonna add in some details pencil is now really really tiny <laughs> um, I'm also gonna add a little bit of this kind of reddish brownie color which is shade 283 so I'm gonna use a tiny bit of this on the nose just to add a tiny bit of like reddish tint around the edge of the nostrils because it's not completely brown brown and so I don't want it to look super flat so I'm gonna add in some of this just gently around the edges of the nostrils and at the bottom here, just to add in a little bit more colour, make it a little bit more accurate, add in a little bit more depth, I guess. So that's that. And then, yeah, I'm going to go in with that tiny little shade, which is 177, that little brown that I just sharpened up. And I'm just going to add in basically all the little details that I can see here, these little lines. And then I will go in with some white to highlight some parts. So I'm just going to just 
roughly, gently add in some little lines to create some of the details on the nose. What's the problem with pastels? If you get them really sharp and then you press slightly too hard, it just splits. But there. Just something you have to sacrifice when using pastels, I guess. It's not the end of the world. Still, it's still on a pretty sharp point, so it's sharp enough to get the details in that I want. Some slight detail at the top but not as much it's a lot more like blank at the top and just white um, but I'll add in the white at the end These little little details on the nose don't need to be precise at all. It just needs to give the illusion of the little markings, um, like ridges on the nose. So they don't need to be precise, just rough little squiggles really. Like that. Um, yeah, I've got the medium white, so it's slightly harder than the soft one that I used before, and this shade 101. I'm just going to sharpen this up as well, so it's a really sharp point. Cool. And then I've got, yeah, so it's a nice sharp point now, so I'm just going to then add in some similar squiggles, but with the white. I'm not pressing super, super hard, um, but just in all the light kind of areas, and in between some of the other squiggles. So just focusing around the areas which you can see more light bits on the nose. Around the top bit here, it's less squiggly like and it's more more just white and then kind of blend it in with the little squiggles. like that. Then I am going to add a very small amount of cream which is the 103. I'm just going to add in a very very light bit of this around the edge of the nostrils just to kind of blend the white bit into the brown bit if that makes sense and because cream is like less harsh than white it kind of blends it a little bit nicer. just a bit more soft 
really. So that should blend that a little bit better. So I'm going to leave that like that for now and then I can come back and add anything to that if I feel like it needs it later on. So I'm going to grab this brown 176 and I'm going to map out kind of the more browner areas around the muzzle. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to start by doing that. So around the mouth, around the nose, um, all this area basically. Any bits that are a bit more on the darker or browner side, I'm just going to roughly map out. So I'll be doing a base layer on the whole of this area next, I think. So I've basically done the nose. So then I'm just going to work on adding a base layer to the rest of it. Minus the neck, because that's going to be in the final part. I don't know why this week I've been just so tired. I think so I'm finishing up this week all my art stuff so before Christmas. So I'm doing all my final like Etsy orders, all my final things, just finishing up for the year really. Um, I just feel like I've just burnt myself out a little bit. You know, and you just need a break. Um, so yeah, it's just Christmas time, um, like November and December are the busiest months for me with my art stuff. And I'm sure a lot of small businesses are the same. Um, and it just really wears me out. So by the time Christmas, well, sort of a week before Christmas is when I finish, when that time comes around, I'm exhausted. I normally go to the gym in the mornings on Thursdays and Fridays, but this week I just haven't managed to do it. So I'm just letting myself off this week because I think I just need a rest. So, yeah. And then I've just got this bulldog tutorial to do, which isn't too much hard work really it's yeah just getting it done <clears throat> and then I can relax and enjoy Christmas and I'm very excited about that and then I've got my honeymoon in January so we're going away for eight nights to the Maldives so that will be amazing so it should be really nice to have a proper break then like away from home don't have to think about anything work related um or like anything stressful like that I can just not that work's always stressful it's just like you know there are parts of work which is stressful um or worrying or just think thinking of things you've got to do all the time um and it'd just be nice to get away from all that for a little while and then I can come back and hopefully I'll feel really refreshed and I can come back on a clear mind and I'll be very motivated to get on with everything in the new year so that will be I think that will do me some good. This stage of the base layer also always like when you do this base layer and blend out the base it just doesn't always look very good so this is always the kind of stage where things are not coming together at the moment so always just push through these stages and if you think it doesn't look great keep going because most of the time it will end up coming together at some point Especially when you've started adding in some details and stuff, it does come together. Yeah, 
So I'm sort of just going to do up to this point. Um, so I'll do the chin, well not the chin, the kind of lower jaw area and then I'll do all this neck bit in the final part which is a lot more out of focus and blended. So that final part shouldn't take very long to do but I'll get that bit done next week. brown underneath here, underneath this mouth area. I don't know what part you'd call this, like the lower jaw I suppose. It's quite brown and then I will add in some like pinky colours. There's some kind of pinkish colours around the nose and mouth as well. So we'll be adding that in. There's also quite a lot of brown around this upper jaw kind of bit. Upper jaw, I don't know. I don't know what you'd call this. Upper mouth. And then I will blend that out as well. And this line that separates the upper mouth to the lower jaw kind of area, I'm going to use some black as well just to separate them out a little bit more because that bit here and here is quite dark. So I just need to... I will darken that up to separate the two bits of the mouth. That's just sort of a rough bit of where all the dark kind of areas are. Um, and then I'm going to add in some of the orange because there's a little bit of orange in certain places. So where is that one still? Yeah, I'm going to take this one, which is the only one in the Stabilo Carbothello range that, oh, hiccup, that I've used in this whole portrait. So yeah, I'm going to use that one again for the orangey areas. Just map those areas out just roughly so there's some orange here and here just some orangey tones and up here and there's some sort of up here around nearer the nose as well I'm just going to add that in really really roughly not being too precise I'm going to blend it all out anyway and then I can always add in some more later if I feel it needs it. And then same here, there's some orange here, tiny bit above the nose there, not very much, just a hint of it. in some of the soft white in just some of the whiter areas and then I'm gonna add a little bit of pink and then blend it all out that should be the base layer there done so I'm just gonna add here some of the white not being too precise 
just sort of adding a rough kind of bit of it. Actually, I think I'm going to use the harder white. Am I? No, I'm going to stick with the soft white for this part, and then I'm going to add the details in later with the harder white. That's what I think I'm going to do. There's also some orange here. I'm just going to add that in. Then I can always add in some more a bit later on. So as I said earlier, this part's always the messy part, doesn't look fab. Um, this bit just looks a bit of a mess, um, very scribbly, very messy. But once you blend it out and start adding in details and stuff, it does start coming together. So always with this part, just bear with it for a while longer. Because a lot of people give up kind of at these stages and they're just like, this does not look good. Will this ever look good? And then they give up because it just looks rubbish. But it will get better. It's just always going to look a bit rubbish at this point. Yeah, and I'm going to add in a little bit of pink. Well, then I'm going to use this. Yeah, this pink and then potentially... So the pink is shade 132 and then this reddish brownie colour which is shade 283. I think I'm going to add a tiny bit of these. So the pink around this area because it's just got that pink tint and even on the nose here there's a slight pink tint so I'm just going to add a little bit of the, this pink around the bottom of the nose here as well. There we go. And then yeah just shade this area in this pink. shade 283 this kind of reddish brownie color I'm gonna add in a bit of it here just underneath this pink area we'll go back in with more of this color later but I'm just adding in a very small amount of it for now There we go. So for the browner parts, I'm going to use the blending stump that's got some brown on, that doesn't matter. But for the lighter parts, um, I think I'm going to use a different blending stump um, so that I don't drag too much brown into the white areas. So starting off with the browner one, I'm just going to blend the more kind of browny areas together.
and then going in with a lighter blending stump, just roughly blending out the white bits very, very slightly. And then I will add in further details. layer of the muzzle and nose and everything done. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start working on this top bit here first I think. So for this area I'm going to use the harder white, so the medium, um, some brown. I'm going to use this lighter brown 179 and also the darker brown again. Um, 177. So these three colours I'm going to use for these top bits. So I'm going to start off by darkening up the brown bits again. I will probably add in a tiny bit of black as well to these areas just to add a little bit more depth in certain parts. There's certain parts which need darkening up just a little bit further. So that's that, and then I'm going to add in um, a little bit of this other brown, which is 179, which I said about, just to kind of blend the white and the brown in together slightly. So it's not quite so harsh. And this bit here, just above the nose, is not as white as it looks there. So I'm just going to add in a little bit of this lighter brown here, just to blend it in a little bit better. You can hear my stomach going again, it's because I'm starving. I always seem to film this tutorial before lunch so I'm starving so my stomach's just constantly making noises which isn't ideal <laughs> so ignore that okay so that's some of that 
and then I'm going to make one just add a little bit of brown kind of there. I think it needs a bit darkening up. Right, I'm gonna get the black. I'm just gonna give it a quick sharpen because it's a little bit blunt. Here we go, so that is sharper. I'm also just gonna deepen up this crease in the center of the nose, just a slight amount there. Okay, so on some of these areas here, I'm just gonna add in very, very lightly black, just to darken it up slightly, just increase the depth of the kind of folds in the skin, I guess. Um, just pressing really lightly with the black. Don't wanna to press too hard, because it will look too harsh. I think this does make a big difference because you're just deepening up the creases a bit further, making it just, yeah, create more depth, really, which helps make it look more realistic. But you don't want to press too hard. It will just look too muddy and just too dark and harsh. So I'm just pressing really, really lightly. Then it kind of makes the brown look like it's a darker brown rather than black, if that makes sense. And then around the nose here, like these side bits, is quite a bit more darker. So I'm just going to add in some more black around these areas. Like that. Okay, and then I'm going to go in with the harder white again. Well, it's medium. I'm just going to sharpen it very, very slightly, and then I'm going to add in some more details. And then, yeah, I'm just going to add in some more hair strokes um, where the whiter areas are to define some of the hairs a bit more. Because you can slightly see some of the hairs um, on these areas, like overlapping this part of the face which kind of creates that more 3D look rather than it looking quite flat. So yeah, I'm just gonna add in some little fur strokes around the edge of the white bits, brighten up the white, ooh, brighten up the white a little bit more. Um, this side over here, so you can just see I'm adding in some tiny little hair strokes. Kind of like that. Um, I'm going to add in a bit more brown, I think, on this bit here because the white is too thick. So 
So I'm just going to add in a bit more brown here. like that um just thinking yeah so i'm gonna go in with the brown again 177 when i say the brown there's loads of browns but yeah 177 um i'm gonna darken up some of the this lower area here i will probably add in a little bit of black here as well to be honest where i'm just doing here because that's quite dark um, and then I think I need to add in loads of tiny little hair strokes this brown is not going to be the easiest because it's so tiny so I'm just going to see if I've got a spare one of these here we go nice new one in 177 so it's the same as this one but just a little bigger so it's easier to hold for smaller details so I'm going to start adding in the tiniest tiniest little hair strokes because there's just all these really short hairs around this area and um, they're not long so you don't want to do long strokes you want to kind of just do the tiniest little strokes almost like dots but slight lines just to create the illusion of those little hairs I'm just going to add them in kind of where I can see them on this part of the muzzle It doesn't need to be super precise, I'm just doing it sort of roughly where I can see these bits really. And I'm going to add in some reddish brown as well on top because I feel like I need to add a bit more of a reddish tint. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to slowly add in these tiny little strokes with the brown. And these bits here which are where the kind of whiskers come out of, these little darker splodges. Just darken those up slightly as well. I can add some whiskers right at the end.
stomach starving i will add in some other shades of brown as well um but these are just i'm just sort of mapping out the dark areas doing all the darkest little strands at first and then yeah i'm gonna add in some lighter brown some reddish brown maybe a bit more orange maybe some cream that kind of thing to like deepen it up add some more like color variety so it's not completely flat You can see the more I'm adding, the more it kind of slowly comes together because it just looked like a mess at first. And then the more kind of details, the more colours you add, the more like bits like that, just the further you get with it, it just slowly comes to life, slowly comes together. And you can just keep adjusting until you're happy with it, which is one thing I love about pastels. You can just keep adjusting. Um, until you get there and also I like acrylic paint for that reason as well you can paint over any mistakes which is what I like because I'm human I make mistakes um, I mess up quite a bit so I like to be able to correct myself so that's the kind of darker brown i'm going to leave this bit for a sec i'll come back to that um or will i no maybe i will do this at the same time actually so i'm just going to add in some more darker hairs here kind of looking at the direction the fur goes in i'm just going to try and do each color over the entire thing for now rather than doing it section by section uses very similar colours this part so
one thing I have noticed that I've done here is around the bottom of the nose and these pink bits, they're actually connected, as you can see here. So I'm gonna change that now so that I'm just gonna use the this pink shade 132 that I used earlier. I'm just gonna kind of connect those two bits up. Because I just realized that that bit I had not done, didn't look, something didn't look quite right. Connecting it together slightly like that. Then I'll add in a little bit of the white as well. kind of connected um, and then there's also some pink around here so I'm just going to add in some pink here um, and there's also a slightly deeper looking pink here as well which I think I'm going to use the brownish kind of the reddish brownie colour so I think that may actually work this one which is shade 283 because I'm going to add some of this in anyway I'm going to add some around the bottom of this pinkish area here, blend the brown into the pink and up here as well, I'm going to use some of this. And then here there's kind of some reddish tint, so I'm just going to add that in here. And then, yeah, around this part of the mouth, there is quite a lot of this reddish kind of colour. Add in a bit more brown again. I will add in some like lighter colours in this area as well because there are some kind of light hairs. And I'm going to add in some black kind of around the this mouth area just to kind of separate the two. Um, not pressing too hard again because I don't want to make it look too harsh. instead of just doing lines, they're going you know, like um, just a straight line, I'm kind of doing little back and forth motions just to make it look a little bit softer so it doesn't look so harsh and like just like a line because that just wouldn't make it look very realistic so I'm just sort of doing it like that and then I'm going to add a little bit of black here just a tiny bit just to deepen up this bit here which are quite dark like that tiny bit here yep. and then 
I'm going to go in with this brown, which is shade 179, which is a lighter brown, and I'm going to add in some more kind of hair strokes um, around the muzzle on that, but just it's just a slightly lighter brown, so it adds some slightly softer hair strokes rather than that dark brown the whole time. And this circle, this like bit here that I've done, it's a bit too big, so I'm just gonna add some white just to kind of make it smaller. And just blend that bit out a little bit. There we go. I just made it a bit too big. Then I think I will add in a bit more orange and cream because there are some lighter hairs on top of the kind of darker bits so I'm going to add those in as well. Got my stomach is just hungry. No, I've not got too much left of this bit to do and then this part will be done. It's not actually taken quite as long as I thought it would. But I think it's because we're so far into the portrait now that um, I kind of got used to the colours I'm using and got used to the techniques that I'm using for this type of fur and stuff like that. So it seems to take, the beginning part always takes a lot longer than like the further you get into it because you kind of get used to what colours you're using and stuff like that, I find. I usually start off working a bit slower and then it speeds up as I go as I get used to the piece that I'm working on, kind of get more into the swing of it. I'm going to use some cream, shade 103. And I'm going to kind of add in some strokes around the edge of the mouth, well, at the edge of this kind of area, just to add in some lighter strokes, but I didn't want to use the white because it might be a bit harsh, so I'm just sort of adding in a few lighter hairs here and there. And then there's also quite a few lighter hairs around this area. So I'm just going to add in some of those like this. Some of the hairs are a little bit longer around this area as well. Compared to up here is all really, really short. And then down here the hair does get a little bit, the hairs get a bit longer. Just mimicking that like that. And then same here, this side adding in some lighter hairs the cream it's just softer than using the white I will be adding some whiskers to this portrait, but I think I might leave that until I've done the final part and do it. <coughs> oh, bless me. 
just me. Yeah, until I've done the final part, um, because I usually add that sort of thing as the finishing touches, especially as some of the whiskers come over here to like this area and stuff. So I want to make sure the whole portrait's complete before I add in those kind of things. So we'll come back right at the very end and add in those like little details like that, which is always one of my favourite parts because it just like finishes the portrait off nicely, finishes it off with just those little tiny details that you don't want to miss. with how that is looking. So yeah, I think I might leave the part here. Oh no, hang on, I've got this part to do. Let me not forget that, let me not get ahead of myself. I wanna finish this bit here before I finish this part off. Um, and then the final part will just be the neck and then we are done, so. Yeah, I'm just gonna do this bit first. I completely forgot about that bit for a second. Don't wanna miss, miss out on that. Yeah, so. Um, just gonna add in a bit more of this darker brown. I might add in a little bit more black actually as well, just to deepen it very, 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 very slightly. So I'm just gonna add in a little bit of black kind of here but pressing extremely lightly, like I'm barely letting it touch the paper. Just to darken up these bits, really. Like that. Just so it adds that little bit extra kind of depth to the bit underneath the mouth there. And then there are these really light hairs, which I'm gonna add in now. Um, actually, I'm just gonna add in a tiny bit more of the darker brown at the top. Just darken up this bit here, just very, very slightly. Cool, and then, yeah. So I'm gonna sharpen this again. So I don't feel like the hairs on the chin are white. They look quite cream to me. So I'm gonna use the cream again, which is shade 103, which I've used quite a bit for this part. Um, and I'm just gonna add in the hairs, making sure that I do them in the direction that it, they are in the reference picture. So kind of go in one direction on one side, and then on this side, they kind of change direction. So I'm focusing on that, making sure I get that right. And then same on the other side. Might add in a couple of white hairs just to kind of vary the softness of the hair color, if that makes sense. So just make it slightly more varied looking. So yeah, I'm gonna just get the white um, the hard or well, the medium one, just add in a couple of more whiter hairs. There we go. So that is that. So let me zoom out. And that is what the piece is looking like now. So in the final part, I will be adding in the neck, which is quite soft looking, and then also adding in final details, such as the whiskers, and maybe making a couple changes to anything that I think needs it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next week for the final part. Bye.